First Taiwan special episode for this new wonderful week. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to talk about vape. I, I, I recent, well, I'll give you a perspective in Taiwan, what's happening with vape. See, I, t Taiwan's government has been on and off about uh, what, what type of vape is legal and illegal, or they're going to make illegal. And it, it comes down to the fact that Taiwan's government wants to tax everything. They, they want tax on stuff. So there, I need to check what these exact numbers are. But there's something like uh, just last year, Taiwan's government made like a billion dollars in U.S. dollars in taxes from cigarettes and doesn't know where the money went. You know, so it, it's like Taiwan's government doesn't want nicotine vaping to, you know, e-cigarettes. They don't want this to be legal because they want to tax it first. They only want it to be illegal if they can tax it. Or they want it to be legal. Let's say, okay, because they need the money. But when they tax the cigarettes, they don't know where that money goes. So who exactly is it that's getting this money that's so important for the government? So, so that kind of stuff is going on and it's, and it's drawing a lot of attention inside Taiwan. So... A lot of people are talking about this where I'm at. Now, I was recently uh, reading, a, it was a, a report about how vaping is causing lung conditions in certain people. All right. As I understand the, the vape liquid, it's not just water, it's glycerin. And there's... You're, you're breathing in glycerin. Now, I don't know if you know what glycerin is. Glycerin is what makes bubbles in the bubble bath. It's the bubble ingredient in the bubble bath. Glycerin, it, it, it's slimy, it's gooey, it's thick. Kind of like sugarish. It's sugary. Kind of, maybe. Glycerin takes moisture and transfers it. Okay, so you explain what you, you put glycerin on a surface. Follow me here, because this is this is important. I explain you to you the inside politics going on with, with vaping, and I know about these conversations because I'm in a country that's deeply well. I mean, right now, nicotine vape is illegal because they declared nicotine to be a pharmaceutical. Now, last time I checked, nicotine was a natural. Uh, a natural chemical, not a pharmaceutical, but they're trying to govern it like a pharmaceutical. And the reason is just because Taiwan wants to tax it. So everyone's talking about this and now they got lung conditions and that's going to be used to politicize it to say, oh, see, it's illegal because they can't tax it. So they'd rather drive people back to smoking the tobacco, which is dangerous rather than vape, which isn't. So this is highly political. Okay. So follow me on this glycerin. Glycerin, they, they might put glycerin in soap. I know they put it in bubble bath. Glycerin takes moisture from one and puts it on the other. So you put glycerin on a surface, such as your hand while you're washing your hands. You put glycerin on a surface and then it's on the surface. So your hand, your skin, uh, a, a piece of wood, you know, whatever. And then there's the fluid, which might be water. It, it might be submerged in water or it might be in atmosphere, in the air. So if you put glycerin in the water and take a bath, the glycerin is on your skin. Your skin is the surface and then it's in the water. The water is the fluid. And the glycerin is touching your skin. It, it comes through the water, whatever, it's touching your skin. And it's going to transfer moisture between the water and your skin. So if you've got glycerin in the bath and you're, you're in the bath, the glycerin that touches your skin is going to take the extra moisture from the water and transfer it to your skin and it will moisturize your skin faster. Whichever has more moisture, it'll transfer it to the other. Okay. 
If you put glycerin on your skin and just leave it on your dry skin, not in the water, but in the air, well, your skin then has more moisture than the air. So it will make your skin become extra dry because it's using the water, the moisture from your skin to moisturize the, the air. If, if, you, if, if you put glycerin on your skin, you're basically turning your body into a humidifier. You're taking the moisture out of your body and you're putting it into the air with glycerin on your skin. Okay, that's what glycerin does. It, it maybe it moisturizes, maybe it demoisturizes. It takes moisture and transfers it between the surface and the fluid. Whichever one has more moisture, it'll take it from that and transfer it over to the one that has less moisture. Okay, so in the bath, you get extra moist. In the air, it makes you dry. All right, that's what glycerin does. Well, if you're breathing in glycerin, and by the way, I've been talking all day. I've got a great story too. Well, yeah, in fact, a very interesting story. It's something that just happened with, with some friends. So let me finish this first, and then I'll talk about why my voice is hoarse, because I've been talking. If you breathe in glycerin, like this, watch. Let me take my non-nicotine vape here. Breathe this in. There. Now, if, if it's either of you who watches my YouTube channel, you see the, the, the vapor come out. There's glycerin in there. And so there's a little bit of glycerin now in my lungs. And the glycerin in my lungs will be taking water from my body and transferring it into the air. And the air I breathe out should be extra moisturized. Now, if you do that, it's going to dry out your lungs. Duh. Now, I've, I've dealt with lots of lung problems. I've been to the hospital twice. I've been x-rayed twice and in 10 years in Taiwan, I've had strange stuff in my lungs. I found out I had symptoms of angina, went to a chiropractor, straightened out my neck. The angina symptoms went away. I was never diagnosed with it. I've, I've been, had, had needed to, but so I, I've dealt with chest pain and lung pain. I've dealt with lung inflammation. I've, I learned I, at one point I was on, um, on the, the, the breather, the inhaler medicine, uh, with asthma stuff. I actually used to get asthma attacks long, long ago. And I found out that it was lung sensitivity. I've dealt with this. I've been through lung sensitivity issues. And I have found that when I feel the pain in my chest, uh, my father got pleurisy one time. When I'm, I know it when it's in my chest, it's my lungs. I just need to drink a lot of water and it goes away. Now that's my experience. I get, I, I get stressed. I get tense. I want to snap at people and I'm just dehydrated. And it, it goes in the lungs first because your lungs are constantly putting vapor into the air, what moisture into the air. Okay. So uh, for me, it's not a problem here. I'm going to take my non-nicotine vape here. I'm going to breathe it in. There. And both of you on YouTube who watched saw the vapor come out of my mouth. Now, I, I can do this, and when I feel lung chest pain, I just drink water, and that solves it. So, I, you know, these reports are going to be coming out about vape and how it causes lung conditions of some sort, and people get lung problems, and uh, unknown as to what, yeah, yeah, whatever. What does glycerin do? It removes water, so the solution add more water. Drink a lot of water. I don't have a problem vaping. I, well, you know, I know that being in Taiwan. Okay. Now this, this, this story about, um, my friend here, you know, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to talk a little just a little bit about Hong Kong and tell you get, dates. Dates are important for Hong Kong. I had a friend, uh, haven't seen her in a while. Went and visited house. Kid comes down, opens the door. His brother shows up. They're all talking in Chinese about something. There's much ado about something. Well, I found, I went on a fishing expedition and I couldn't catch anything. So I went spear fishing. And uh, that means that I told the kid to tell me what they were talking about and made him tell me. He said, I lost my iPad on the bus. Now, this is Taiwan where a bus is like, we're talking 15 passenger bus here. We're not talking big fat school bus. So I said, tell your dad right now. He goes, no, he'll be angry. I go, he'll be angry. He'll be more angry if you don't tell him. He's your dad. He's an adult. He can do things. He can get it for you. 
So I made him go up and tell his dad. His, his dad got the phone right away. I, I think called someone, called the bus, found out where the bus was. The bus was going to stop and meet him, found the bus. The iPad was on the bus. We're talking like, you know, the kid had been off the bus for five minutes. So it was doing its bus route thing. It was probably just around the corner. No problem. Now, one of the things the dad said was, because someone had lost something on the bus before, the dad said, you've got to return it. Because if you don't return it, then people won't return stuff that gets lost on the bus. Well, now the kid lost something, but they were in, they had by by returning something that was lost, like last week, they had started a culture on the bus of returning stuff that's lost. So when he lost his iPad, can someone say pay it forward? All right. Well, later on, one of the other kids told me that, that he was doing a YouTube channel with video games. And he said, don't tell my dad. And I said, because well, I'm always teaching everybody, everywhere I go in Taiwan, I'm teaching them how to make videos and how to do YouTubing and how to use Ubuntu. And it makes so many people awesome in Taiwan. Everywhere I go, I'm always talking about, I might, you do YouTube channel. You know, you got it. You know, oh, but don't tell my dad. Cause he'll be angry if he sees the video, the, the channel is evidence of my video games. I made him tell his dad. I, I mean, I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to spy on my friend's kids. You know, I, you know, I, I, I don't do that because then I'm not going to find an information, but it's a family thing. I said, you need to tell your dad. So I made him tell his dad. His dad wasn't angry. His dad wants to make sure he's not playing video games all the time. But goodness, I mean, is it, wouldn't that be awesome if your kid wanted to play video games so he could, he could screencast them and monetize them on YouTube rather than just entertain himself with them, but wanted to actually make money with them. Wouldn't you be proud if your kid was trying to find some creative way to make bank? You know, I, I well, this is another, so the life and, and then, and then we did Bible reading and you know what the Bible reading was about? That's right. 365 Bible day four, Adam and Eve ate the fruit and realized they were naked and they were afraid to talk to God. Right. I, so the lesson of the day was don't be afraid to tell your dad stuff. Both brothers, the Bible reading, don't be afraid. You're, 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 I said, your awesome dad wants you to be, you know, learning to use the computer. Don't hide stuff from your awesome dad who wants you to be awesome. And who wants you to have YouTube channels? Don't hide stuff from him. If you're doing something that he'd say no to, then it's dangerous and you shouldn't do it anyway. Now, I can say that because this kid's dad really is awesome. He doesn't hate good things. And, you know, that's one of the big problems in the world is kids don't talk to their parents because their parents hate good things. And so in order to like good things, you have to... Uh, not tell your parents, not tell your authorities. Can someone say outlawing vape? Okay. You know, I just, if you want the people under you to trust you, then you've got to like good things. Uh, there's a movie, Lean on Me, Morgan Freeman. Go watch it. Go, go, go watch it. You know, this, this, it, it's really, because I see, I was in the education world and it really, you know, I had a teacher that was a lot like that mover and shaker and had to learn stuff was a bit of a jerk sometimes, but we needed him being himself, which included being a jerk sometimes. And maybe he needed to be a jerk and we didn't like it. Maybe he shouldn't have been a jerk, but even then he's making stuff happen. We need him to be himself, grow a little bit, be himself. And what are you going to do? We all are in this together, but we need people like that. And then you've got the people that come along. You do something. The only thing smart you do the only thing that's smart. There's only one course of action that's smart. There aren't many. There is not another way. There's only one way. And you do it, someone is going to be mad at you and make it their life's mission to give you trouble and try to get you fired or whatever. Just because you did that one thing and they'll have a thousand reasons why it was bad. And then, of course, they'll attack you for your faults but it's because of the good that you do. It's amazing. You can't do things that make sense without someone being mad about it. It's, I mean, it's amazing. 